Soon we will all say goodbye to the 20th century, the century of the Emperor's new art. I had decided that I would end the millennium in Cerebus with a one-two punch, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway. Several times as I worked on my F. Scott Fitzgerald character, F. Stop Kennedy, and as I worked on F. Stop Kennedy's book, Pleasure's Simple Life, many times I thought, this is almost too hard, working on these word rhythms and polishing each phrase, trying to polish it truly and good so as not to lose the spontaneity of expression, but to polish it nonetheless. Many times I thought, imagine how hard it will be to write like Ernest Hemingway, who everyone knows won the Pulitzer and Nobel Prizes. It will be, I would like to think to myself, like trying to write like Norman Mailer, as I did in Pilgrimage to Provincetown, and the sequence in Guise, and like trying to write like Oscar Wilde in Jacques' story, and like trying to write like F. Scott Fitzgerald in Fall in the River, and in Chasing Scott. Only it will be like trying to write like all of them at once, rolled together, and maybe even it will be harder still than that. And as issue 251 loomed up towards me, and I was only two months ahead on the book, even writing issue 249, so Gerhard would have to do most of the drawing, so I would have another two weeks to add to my two months that I was ahead. Even so, I thought to myself, this is impossible. I studied Scott Fitzgerald's writing for more than a year before I thought and felt that I was only a little up to the task of imitating his The Beautiful and Damned voice. I began my hard study of Ernest Hemingway's writing only a few hours after I had finished my part of Fall on the River. See the old man. See the sea. See the old man chase the big fish in his little boat. Chase the big fish, old man. Chase the big fish. As I have said, truly it was a good joke on me. Ho, ho, ho. In a way, studying Ernest Hemingway's writing was as hard to do as I thought it was going to be, but only because it is very hard to read C. Dick Run, Run Dick Run, for any length of time once you were past the age of seven. It is not hard to see, I thought to myself, how Hemingway could disbelieve Scott Fitzgerald when Fitzgerald told Hemingway about Fitzgerald's marathon writing sessions of eight hours or more. Hemingway called Fitzgerald a liar, and told him no one could write for longer than four hours or so. When I read that during my Fitzgerald research, I thought it was very untruly and ungood for me, because I have written for longer than four hours at a stretch, and there are many writers who do so, and have done so. Like so many others, I thought Hemingway must be right and I must be wrong, for was not Hemingway the winner of both the Nobel and Pulitzer Prize? Er, the Pulitzer and Nobel Prize? Once I read Hemingway's writing, I understood. It is possible to write for eight hours or more. It is not possible to type for nine hours. Put another way, an infinite number of monkeys with an infinite number of typewriters writing simple declarative sentences will, from time to time, type a particularly engaging simple declarative sentence or two, and sometimes three. But after four hours, they are going to be through for the day, and they will need to drink a pitcher of margaritas each. <laughs>